Welcome back to Level-Headed Mind, where we provide mental health education to empower you to make well-informed decisions about your mental health care. In today's video, we're going to be talking about benzodiazepines. Benzo, huh? Yeah, benzodiazepines. You know, the lorazepam, alprazolam, clonazepam, diazepam, pretty much any PAM is a benzodiazepine. Except the first benzodiazepine that came out in 1959 was actually chlordiazepoxide or Librium. So when the benzodiazepines first came out, they were actually touted as a miracle drug because they were safer than the barbiturates, which at the time were used to treat anxiety and barbiturates caused a lot of overdoses. It comes with a very high risk of overdose. Like you only need to take a few of them and you could die from an overdose on barbiturates. So when the benzodiazepines came out, they were looked at as being safer than the barbiturates, but still very effective to treat anxiety. So what's the problem then? I mean, they treat your anxiety very quickly. They seem to be very effective. They're safer than the barbiturates. What could go wrong? Well, the problem with benzodiazepines is, is that they are not meant to be used for long-term treatment, which actually was not known at the time. So when they first came out, they were being used for long-term treatment of anxiety. And as people were being on these medications for long term, they needed higher doses, which created a tolerance to the medication and a dependence. Then at a certain point, the anxiety was no longer being treated and the medication was really not even effective anymore. And these patients were experiencing rebound anxiety, which is pretty much when the anxiety that was being treated comes back, but it comes back actually worse than it was before. So the patients were coming back and feeling worse and then realizing that they were actually addicted and dependent on these medications. So benzodiazepines are no longer used as first-line treatment for anxiety, panic disorder, or PTSD. They are only to be used in very severe cases for short-term use only, which is two to four weeks max. Because this risk of dependence is pretty pronounced. In fact, benzos are the third most commonly misused substance in the United States. And 2.2% of the US population is addicted to a benzodiazepine. That's like, seven million people. Not only are they the third most commonly misused medication, but they still come with the risk of overdose and dependence when paired with another CNS depressant or central nervous system depressant like alcohol or opioids. And in fact, benzodiazepines are involved in nearly 30% of all opioid overdose so, not really that safe. And, like any other medication, they come with side effects. However, these side effects can be long-term. So, when you first take the medication, you'll experience short-term side effects. And these short-term side effects are sedation, maybe you're off balance a little bit, your gait is unsteady, You'll have a decreased alertness and some memory deficits. However, with long-term treatment or long-term use of benzodiazepines, so anywhere from a few months to years, you'll end up with these long-term side effects. And these long-term side effects involve increased memory impairment, such as decreased processing speed, decrease in recent memory, decrease in attention, decrease in your expressive language use. So like, I don't know, what was I saying? I think I meant to say things like that can happen. 
and decreased visual and spatial processing. So your depth perception may be off, which is why you really shouldn't be driving when taking these medications. And you could actually get a DUI if you're found to be under the influence of a benzodiazepine and driving. Okay, so what's the big deal? I'll just stop taking the medication and those side effects will go away and I'll be fine. Not so fast. Once you get to a point of tolerance and dependence with a benzodiazepine, it's actually very difficult to come off of this medication. And you have to do it very slowly and safely under the direction of your mental health care provider, of course, because it can be dangerous to just abruptly stop the medication because not only will you experience withdrawal symptoms, but you may also get what's called status epilepticus or seizures that continuously happen over and over and over again, which can lead to death. So you don't want to just stop these medications on your own. You want to do it slowly and safely under the direction of your provider. Now, if you happen to be one of those patients that does come off of this medication safely, Unfortunately, you're not out of the woods just yet because studies have shown that patients who have stopped benzodiazepine 10 months after stopping the benzodiazepine still experience significant effects with their memory, such as the slow processing, poor attention, decreased reactivity, and things that we mentioned that occurs when you're on the medication. They still experience those side effects 10 months after stopping the medication. Furthermore, these patients are shown to be a higher risk for early onset dementia. So yeah, not a medication you want to get stuck on. So what are your options if you have anxiety or panic disorder or PTSD? Well, first-line treatments are going to be the SSRIs or SNRIs. And I recommend that patients who have anxiety also utilize cognitive behavior therapy or other psychotherapy modalities such as trauma-focused therapy or exposure therapy so that they can build skills to help combat the anxiety and to retrain your brain not to overthink and go into fear mode or worry mode where you get overwhelmed and where anxiety begins to manifest. When you learn these skills, such as cognitive behavior therapy, you actually learn to rewire your brain towards new pathways of thinking so that you think more in the prefrontal cortex and the frontal lobe of your brain before going directly to the amygdala or fear center. So in a year from taking your SSRI, when you start coming off of the medication, you'll have skills to use to mitigate the impact of anxiety and you would have built a lot more resilience against the anxiety. So the best treatment I believe for anxiety is medication and psychotherapy. So are you taking a benzodiazepine or have had experience with taking one? I'd like to hear about it. Let me know in the comment section below. Or if you'd like us to cover other medications used to treat anxiety, put that in the comment section below, because we'd like to make videos that help and impact your mental health journey. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.